Kiora. So the plan is I picked up some bits of channeled aluminium and a flat bar and this toolbox for like 30 bucks so like 20 bucks in USD it is a bit flimsy I I can see myself buying some um, aluminium angles and like reinforcing these like drilling out the rivets and putting in bolts in place um, but that's probably not due for quite some time or even just put in a plate um, bolt it that might help with just reinforcing so it is a bit flimsy um, you can see that flexing and you can see just that it's literally tin but it should make for a pretty decent um, luggage rack slash you know storage container so the plan is I'm gonna have two of these um, aluminium channels and I'm gonna have them running like that there then two at the front and have these pieces running down the side just under these so I can bolt right onto here and that way I can run straps and strap things onto the top and the front and strap the whole thing down to the back of the bike Okay, so I just went in and got myself a precision engineer's um, square accurate to 0 0.0005 kilometers a precision micrometer for measuring out the stock and a precision machinist's blue so that I can mark it out and go over there and chop these things best so got these pieces marked down at half a meter length. This toolbox itself is about a um, it's about uh, 550 millimeters. So half a meter that covers most of that ground without going over, which is perfect. And of course the front ones as well. Now I mark these the supports that's going under at about 110 millimeters. Um, the box itself width wise is roughly 200, 230. Now the reason I did that, I'm gonna just show you the whole length of it with um, this uh, square. <clears throat> so that's about 150. The reason I did that is because if I have these at the edges, oh my fuck, shut up, god, that. Okay, um, if I had these at the edges, like so, um, I should be able to have. Um, oh, I miscalculated. Um, I need three of those per side, which means I need to make six of them. Um, let me go back and work on that. I'll be right back. So I read the markings um, and I actually set them out to be spaced at about 150 millimeters instead. One is easier with this rule, I just butt it up and then it's 150 mil every time. Um, two, I figured if it goes on a little bit longer, it'll give a wider um, uh, support so that it'll have a harder time shearing off. The reason that there are going to be three is that because that one support one two three supports rather than one at each end that just makes it a great way for you um when you've got luggage up um if there's a strong pull that just creates a good way for those bolts to shear out out of this really thin coca-cola bottle material so i went and cut these to length um more or less anyway as you can see, the cut didn't come out very well on most of these. The burrs are quite severe. This is because I'm a lazy bastard and did not use a non-ferrous cutting wheel. Um, 
aluminium is non-ferrous the cutting wheel I have on my chop saw right now is a um, ferrous cutting wheel which is made of aluminium oxide now aluminium does not cut aluminium very well because it's the same shit which means that wheel is probably clogged to hell right now <laughs> I need to clean it up before I cut any more metal on it um, anyway I'm gonna take a file to these things and just round it over nicely because I am quite allergic to getting my fingers cut on burrs um, you know rashes and all anyway I just pushing these off using the phone. I just. Okay, so the plan is I'm gonna be using M6 hardware to hold all this down together. Got my 6mm drill, which... Take my word for it, it's pretty sharp. And so the plan is, if you don't know how to drill multiple holes um, in the same part with a manual machinery um, there's two ways of doing this so this this works if you're making um, knife handles and trying to align them and things like that as well what you do is you you take a drill you drill um, you drill one part all the holes you want and then you take the other part you drill one hole and you overlap them together you put a spare drill bit through both parts and hold the other end with some clamps and you'll end up with the same drill position on the other two holes it's good enough if you need more go and find yourself a milling machine but I'm not doing anything high accuracy right now so that's gonna be good enough for me um, the first part might get a little chewed up but to be honest, it's gonna go under a bolt header anyway, so who gives a, you know. I'm using a spring-loaded punch here, um, just to punch where I want the holes to go. Um, I much prefer the hammer one, you know, a manual one with a hammer. I think these are, things are a bit flimsy and they're okay, but not great. Um, but I can't quite find mine for some reason. I must have misplaced it somewhere. Now these, um, you really want to 
pre-punch before you drill anything, especially um, anything hard. But it's a good idea to do it in softer material like aluminium as well, just just because it will make it easier for the drill bit to know where exactly it's going. Um, I'm gonna lay it out. Um, I'm gonna put some. Gonna put some. Uh, you know, engineer's blue over where I want to drill. And I'm gonna take my square, I set it to the halfway distance, and just scribe a line on this way, punch it. Okay, so these bars are all drilled and ready to go. I went through and deburred them all. Um, the back side is far from deburred, but I couldn't care less to be honest. No one's putting their fingers up there, unless they're babies. In which case, what the hell is its parents doing? Now I gotta drill the holes for these things, the little supports that's gonna go on the, um, so I'm just gonna space them out, put a vivid right through it, and then just draw a circle, and then drill there. And then once I've drawn a circle, I'm gonna stack the whole thing together, you know, butt them up on one end, and then draw through the whole lot. Um, It'll just make life easier. Drilled and deburred. Um, as I was drilling this, it dawned on me. What can this do that an oversized washer couldn't? Also, I reckon if I do this thing whole thing again. Um, I might have to, depending on how long this actual box lasts me. So I might just go to Bunnings, buy some 3mm thick... Oh man, look at that ribbon. It's, it's like there's a millimeter of space under it, like you can see. Yeah, anyway. And buy some 3mm thick aluminium. And build my own box, maybe a bit... Um, um, bit less in the width, um, a little bit more in height, um, and that will give me an idea as to that you know if if this fucks it up, um, I know that I'm I'm in the wrong, nuts. Whoever made this thing, um, however, I have already. Spill the beans. What's the saying? It's the cock I got. You gotta piss with the cock you got, you know. So I'm gonna see this project through and see how that goes. Okay, so I drilled all the holes and I, let you put, and I cleaned the surface with some uh, methyl spirits. And I just put a light coating of oil on the whole box because it is. Still steel, even though it is galvanized. Um, if you want to prevent it from rusting, rust is probably going to be the biggest issue that I'll ever have, um, aside from the rivets failing. Um, I've just got a tub of used engine oil here that I just loved. Loved, yes. Um, rubbed all over. And I'm placing them in with some, um, I don't know if you can see, nylock nuts. Um, hopefully, that should prevent it from falling out due to vibration. Um, placing the front end now um, and when that's all done I'll show you what it looks like and I'll show you what it looks like on the bike there it is all finished not the prettiest thing in the world but it'll work I put on some bit of bits of duct tape on the sharp corners um, just to prevent myself you know cutting myself and put a bit on this corner because this is the edge that will be sitting on my um, seat. I don't want it to damage my seat, so I made it nice, round, and soft. So I will show you. So this is the idea. Um, as you can see, that it's going to sit on the passenger backside of my SR400. 
and it's going to get a strap to down to the passenger um, hold bars and that's how this will be kept down pressed down um, might run a loop around that way if I'm going the long distance but I think this will be enough anyway thank you for watching and if you plan to make this yourself I will change that I don't think you would necessarily need these bits not sure if that's necessary um, in fact I might make the entire box myself out of aluminium some sheets of aluminium you can find at the hardware store um, box is a bit too wide for my taste I was sure it was about that much smaller um, but oh well I'll use this as is. I might take it on, on a few camping trips it'll be a hell of a lot better than what I had before which is this bag strapped to the back and there's so many straps just flailing in the wind anyway take care have a good day hopefully that gave you some idea regarding the luggage situation for your bike <laughs>